If you were to ask anyone where they would like to go in the end, heaven or hell, no one would choose hell unless they want to make fun of the question. No one wants to go to hell. No one wants to be tormented day and night forever. We always ask ourselves, what should we do to make it to heaven? What can we do to make it to heaven? This question has been going on for years, and we have had many people give answers to this particular question. Some will tell you not to steal. Some will say don't tell lies. Some will say don't murder. All of these things are true. You must not do any of them if you want to go to heaven. One thing I have realized is that you can be a good person by society's standard and go to hell. You can be a good moral person, an upstanding citizen, an example in the community and still go to hell. All of these things are not requirements to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus told us the only way to enter the kingdom of God. It wasn't through being a good person. It wasn't being an upstanding citizen. John 3.3 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is a verse in the Bible that instructs on how to get into heaven. And there is one verse which instructs on how to enter the kingdom of God and how we can continually see the face of the Lord forever. Obey this one verse and your whole life will change. Hebrews 12:14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Peace without holiness is not enough. Holiness without peace is also not enough. The Bible commands us to possess these two qualities. We must strive to maintain peace with everyone around us, and we must also live a pure and holy life. We cannot substitute one for the other. James 2.10 says, For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. You cannot choose to maintain peace and then fail to live rightly. Having one quality without the other is the same as having none at all. If you desire to see the Lord, you must strive to maintain peace and live in holiness. The Bible packaged everything we need to do in order to go to heaven into these two major things. What are we going to do in heaven? We will see the Lord in heaven. The people that will see the Lord are those who will go to heaven. The fact that the Bible says, without these two things no one will see the Lord, doesn't mean some people will never ever see the Lord. Everyone, living and the dead, will see the Lord on the day of judgment but some will see him continually. They are those who will go to heaven. Revelation 20, 12 through 13. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which was in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Hebrews 12.14 Pursue peace with all people, and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. This verse is referring to going into heaven and continually seeing the Lord. Throughout endless ages, those in heaven will gaze upon the face of the Lord. Do you want to see the Lord continually? Do you want to enjoy the blessings that will be on the people who will enter heaven? Revelation 21.4 And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. What are the things you must do to enter heaven? 1. Pursue peace with all mankind. Those closest people to you tend to be our family members, do you actively pursue peace with all those near you? Or does everyone around you get fearful when you walk into the room? You cannot choose to maintain peace and then fail to live rightly. Having one quality without the other is the same as having none at all. If you desire to see the Lord, you must strive to maintain peace and live in holiness. Being at peace with people means you're walking in love with them. It is not possible for peace to reign where there's no love. The Bible tells us that love covers up a multitude of sins. Instead of picking a fight, getting angry or keeping malice, love helps you to deal with offenses in the right way. 
As a Christian, you must maintain a life of peace everywhere you find yourself, so that you do not bring shame to the name of the Lord. You must strive to grow in love, so that you can lead a peaceful life. So I want to ask you a question. Are you pursuing peace with all people? Those closest people to you tend to be our family members. Do you actively pursue peace with all of those near you? Or does everyone have to tiptoe around you because of your short temper? Follow peace with all men. I've always wondered how long God will take to review each of our lives when we stand before him. Because just like the preacher of old said, our lives are records and they are unchangeable. B.R. Lakin once said, when we are born, we are all born with a blank sheet of paper. We are all given a blank sheet of paper at birth that represents our lives. And then as we begin to live, we begin to write the history of our lives. And some things that we can write are unchangeable. Therefore, we should be very careful what we write on the pages of our lives. We are told to pursue peace with all men. Our neighbors, our husbands, our wives, our children. I have wondered about how I would feel when I am looking back at my life and see the moments where I didn't live up to the word of God. The moments where I knew what the word of God told me to do and yet I decided to go my own way. The moments where I knew I should have apologized but I was too proud to do so. The moments, the moments where I had fallen short from the standard of the word of God. The moments where I let my anger get the better of me. The moments where I should have been long suffering with others but I wasn't. The moments where I should have forgiven others, but yet I held grudges. The moments I should have shown love, but I didn't. As you are listening to me now, the pages of our lives are still being written. What will be written in the rest of your life? Pursue peace with all people. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness has to do with living a life of consecration unto God. There is such a holiness as imputed holiness, where holiness is put to our account by God's kindness. For instance, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. But this is not what this verse is talking about. The verse is referring to a holiness which we can pursue, seek and sought after, just like peace with other people can be sought after and pursued. Holiness. There is no other way to say this than saying, if you are not holy, you cannot see the Lord. It is a fact. Our Lord God is holy. He cannot behold iniquity. Why should you then be allowed to enter heaven if there is iniquity in you? Habakkuk 1.13a, King James Version. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. The sin in you will stop you from seeing the Lord. The psalmist asked, who can ascend to the hills of the Lord? He also answered it. Psalm 24, 3-4 Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. If we want to be holy so that we can see the Lord, what are the things that we should do? Wash yourself with the blood of Jesus. The only thing that can make you clean is the blood of Jesus. He has shed his blood so that we can use it to wash away our sins. We can't do this if we do not accept Christ as our Lord. When we accept him, his blood washes us clean and we become clean. 1 John 1.7 King James Version But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Accept Jesus today and let him wash you clean. That is the only way to see the Lord. Ask for grace. The grace of God is what we should never joke with. We cannot do without it. We are forgiven of all our unrighteousness through the grace that we receive through Christ. That grace will make us holy. 
We cannot be holy by ourselves. We may make mistakes, but the grace of the Lord is sufficient for us, and it will make us pure. We must rely on the righteousness of God only. 2 Corinthians 5.21 King James Version For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Read the Word of God The reason why I add this is because when you read the Word of God, it will help you to walk the right path. It will help you not to sin against God. Psalm 119.11 King James Version Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Holiness shouldn't be a thing of debate in the life of every Christian. It is what we should hold on to and make sure it is part of us. We cannot go to God unclean, not the physical, but the spiritual. We need to sanctify ourselves with the blood of Jesus and stay pure like that. That is the only way to see Jesus. There are many blessings of seeing Jesus. We will never be sad again forever. We will not face the second death. There will be no mourning, no death, no pain, no crying. What we will enjoy will be a joy forever and ever. Do what it takes to make sure you see Jesus. That is the goal of every Christian. That is why we are following the steps of Christ.